Audio is probably the most important element to your stream, which is why in this video right here, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know about Streamlabs OBS filters to give you that clean, crisp, and rich voice you've been wanting. And yeah, I'm even gonna show you how to eliminate that annoying background noise. Let's go. Hey, welcome back all you awesome and beautiful people. Wow, here to help you with everything Streamlabs. When we're diving into audio filters, you wanna make sure that your levels are already optimal, which means no distortion, no peaking. Stay out of the red zone in your mixer. Try your best to fall within the yellow of the sweet spot of the mixer. Trust me, it's gonna help you going forward. Also, for a little bit of a pro tip, you can also open up your advanced audio settings by clicking on the cogwheel in the mixer section and change your audio monitoring from microphone to monitor only. This will allow you to hear exactly what your viewing audience will be hearing. Now, as we go forward, all these audio filters will work with cheap microphones and expensive microphones, USB microphones and XLR microphones. So you're covered. So let me dive into these really quick so you can play around with them to get that sweet, sweet sound that you've been wanting. First up, we have gain. Gain simply refers to the loudness of the audio. The gain filter gives you finer control to adjust your audio levels. Turn the gain down and your audio levels will go down. Turn the gain up and your audio levels will go up. A lot of microphones already have a built-in gain control on them. The effect of the built-in gain control and the gain filter in Streamlabs OBS is the same. If you find that your audio levels are still too low after turning up the gain control on your mic and the audio control in Streamlabs OBS, don't worry. Some mics are naturally more quiet than others. The gain filter in this instance will come in handy to make sure you are hitting those optimal levels. Please note by turning up the gain, you are more likely to hear background noise. Noise suppression audio filter. Face it, a good microphone's gonna pick up a lot of background noise. You may hear cars driving in the background, air conditioner units, or just even your annoying little brother in the background. If you stop talking and pay attention to your audio levels in the mixer, you're gonna notice some sort of noise in the background, which is why we wanna introduce a noise suppression filter to get rid of these annoying background sounds. When you add the filter, the suppression level will automatically be set to a negative 30. In most cases, this is going to be too much, and the best way to use a noise suppression filter is add it and play around with the slider and see where it affects your voice versus the background. Everybody's room, voice, and background and sound dampening is gonna be different, so you have to play around with this, so don't be afraid to test, test, and test. The noise gate audio filter works in a similar way to noise suppression and that it gets rid of background noise, but it also offers a bit more customability. If you're a gamer with a mechanical keyboard, the sound of typing on the keyboard can be pretty loud and can be picked up by a microphone fairly clearly, even with noise suppression filter already added on. In this case, adding a noise gate filter can prevent this from happening. When you add a noise gate filter, you're gonna see there's some extra options that you can play around with. The open threshold allows you to set a specific decibel threshold that must be met in order for the microphone to pick up any of that sound. The closed threshold refers to the point when the noise gate will turn off your microphone once the microphone drops below that set dB threshold. Attack time is measured in milliseconds and refers to how long it takes for the noise gate to initiate when the dB threshold is met. Hold time is how long the mic should stay on after the volume has dropped below that closed threshold. Release time is how long it takes for the microphone to mute again once the dB goes below the closed threshold. Again, noise suppression and noise gate are all about testing and testing and testing to find the sweet spot to make sure you get that good clarity and eliminate all the bad things. A compressor filter is a very handy tool to ensure that loud noises coming in through your mic do not exceed a certain volume level for your live stream. This can be very useful if you're a salty player that does a lot of shouting or yelling. Adding a compressor filter will automatically lower your microphone's volume and try to prevent it from peaking above zero dB and causing distortion. After the loud noise has passed, it will turn back up. Compressor also has some customized options that you can do. Ratio is the amount of compression or gain reduction to apply to a signal that is above the threshold. 
The lower the number will apply less compression, the higher the number will apply more. For threshold, once the audio reaches the threshold, the compressor will begin to apply at the ratio you've set. When the audio is below this threshold, no compressor filter will apply. Attack will how quickly in milliseconds you want the compressor to reach a full gain reduction when levels exceed the threshold. Release is how quickly in milliseconds you want the compressor to return to zero gain reduction after the level drops below the threshold. Output gain. It's not usually that your compressor audio levels end up quieter than your average level of sound. Applying output gain brings the average level of the source back up, which can help improve its presence over top of the other audio sources. Slide chain compression can be used to lower the volume of your desktop audio when you're speaking. When you're done speaking, the desktop audio will return to normal. An expander audio filter is another type of noise gate that can be used to reduce background noise. It's similar to a compressor, except that it applies gain reduction to an audio signal below a certain threshold instead of above it. In short, expander makes quiet sounds quieter. When you add this filter, there are two different presets you can choose from. Expander, which gives you low ratio and release time, good for light noise reduction, and gate. High ratio and release time will reduce an audio signal in a similar way to gate. Expander also comes with its own options that you can play around with. Ratio, the amount of expansion or gain reduction to apply to a signal that is below the threshold. Threshold, once the input reaches this level, the expander will stop gain reduction of the signal. Attack, how quickly in milliseconds you want the expander to stop gain reducing once the threshold is exceeded. Release, how quickly in milliseconds you want the expander to reach full gain reduction once the input drops below the threshold. Output gain, increase the output level of the expander by applying gain. Detection, changes how the input level is measured. RMS is the average of the input level measure over the last 10 milliseconds to reduce the sensitivity of the threshold detection. And peak, which is input level measurement is not averaged over time, expander is quicker to react to peak level changes. Limiter audio filters are used to prevent an audio signal from peaking above zero dB, which can cause clipping and distortion. A limiter is a special type of compressor with a very fast attack and a very high ratio. Woo! That was a lot of technical jargon, and that's exactly what it is, but trust me, if you take the time to introduce audio filters, it's gonna help immensely for the quality that you're broadcasting out. Now, if you can't retain all this information, or perhaps I went a little quick over things, which is understandable, because I wanna pump a lot of information into you, it's okay, I'm gonna put a link to the blog down below that goes over each one of these filters and exactly what all the options and sliders and customization that you can do. But my pro tip for you is play around with these and test and test and test because everybody's gonna be a little bit different depending on if you're male or female, large room, small room, how much dampening you have on your walls, what type of microphone and how sensitive it is. There's a lot of factors, so everybody's going to be different, which is why you need to play around and test. Audio literally is one of the most important key elements of your stream that's gonna captivate an audience. So play around with these audio filters to get that velvety smooth voice that you have been wanting. Now that does it for me. My name's Wild for Games, making sure you become bigger and better with Streamlabs. Now, if you need any more help, gonna do you a favor. I'm gonna put a video over here to the side that shows you more capabilities that you can do with Streamlabs. Trust me, you're gonna love it. And until next time, my friends, take care, stay safe, and of course, peace.